Objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, I rise today on behalf of the many who have concluded that enough is enough. I rise today to speak on behalf of the many persons who believe that Article 2, Section 4 of the Constitution of the United States of America has meaning and that it is something that is appropriate for a time such as this, appropriate for a time when there is one among us who seems to incite hatred, bigotry, and invidious discrimination. I rise to speak on their behalf today, Mr. Speaker, and I do so understanding that I'm not doing it on behalf of Republicans, generally speaking, or Democrats, generally speaking. The people that I reference are Americans, generally speaking. So I rise to speak on their behalf, and at this time, I will yield back the balance of this time so that it may have additional time. This time has expired. And the, what purpose does the gentleman seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, pursuant to Clause 2A1 of Rule 9, I seek recognition to give notice of my intent to raise a question of privilege of the House. The form of the re resolution is as follows. Articles of impeachment against Donald J. Trump, President of the United States of America, and the Congress of the United States of America. Resolution resolved that Donald J. Trump, President of the United States of America, has undermined the integrity of his office with impunity and has brought disrepute on the presidency with immunity, has betrayed his trust as president to the manifest injury of the American people, and is unfit to be president, and is impeached pursuant to Article 2, Section 4 of the Constitution of the United States of America and that the following articles of impeachment be exhibited to the United States Senate. Articles of impeachment exhibited by the House of Representatives of the United States of America in the name of itself and of all of the people of the United States of America against Donald John Trump, President of the United States of America, in maintenance and support of its impeachment against him for high crimes and misdemeanors of a nature which may with peculiar propriety be denominated as political, not requiring the commission of a crime and exclusively the jurisdiction of the United States House of Representatives for impeachment purposes. Article 1, that Donald John Trump, President of the United States of America, unmindful of his high duties of his office and the dignity and proprieties thereof, and the harmony, respect, and courtesies which ought to exhibit and be maintained in American society, has under the inane pretext of dispensing with political correctness produced a demonstrable record of inciting white supremacy, sexism, bigotry, hatred, xenophobia, race baiting, and racism by demeaning, defaming, disrespecting, and disparaging women and certain 
minorities. In so doing, Donald John Trump, President of the United States of America, has fueled and is fueling an alt-right hate machine and his worldwide covert sympathizers, engendering racial antipathy, LGBTQ enmity, religious anxiety, stealthy sexism, and dreadful xenophobia, perfidiously causing immediate injury to American society, to wit, on September 23, 2017, Donald John Trump incited race baiting and racism, engendering stealthy sexism and racial antipathy when he disrespected, disparaged, and demeaned mothers of professional football players by calling them dogs as he made the widely published statement, quote, won't you love to see one of these NFL owners, when somebody disrespects our flag, say, get that son of a B-I-T-C-H off the field right now. Out. He's fired. He's fired. On September 23, 2017, Donald John Trump incited race baiting and racism, engendering racial antipathy when he disrespected, disparaged, and disparaged professional football players, approximately 70% of whom are reportedly African American, by calling them sons of dogs. As he made the widely published statement, wouldn't you love to see one of these NFL owners when somebody disrespects our flag, say, get that son of a B-I-T-C-H off the field right now. Out. He's fired. He's fired. On September 30th, 2017, Donald John Trump incited bigotry and race baiting engendering racial antipathy when he disrespected, disparaged, and demeaned Puerto Ricans who are Americans by implying Puerto Ricans want others to do for them what they won't do for themselves. As he made the widely published claim, they want everything to be done for them when it should be a community effort. Further, on October 3rd, 2017, while in Puerto Rico, as was widely shown on American television, Donald John Trump incited bigotry, engendering racial antipathy when he disparaged Puerto Ricans, Puerto Ricans by stating, I hate to tell you, Puerto Rico, but you've thrown our budget a little out of whack because we spent a lot of money on Puerto Rico. And that's fine, but we've saved a lot of lives. The president did not make similar widely published statements about Texas or Florida. On January 27, 2017, Donald John Trump incited xenophobia and hate against Muslims in the United States of America, engendering religious anxiety when he disrespected Islam by issuing Executive Order 13769, fulfilling a campaign promise to ban Muslims from entering the United States of America. This widely published campaign promise is dated December 7, 2015, and reads as follows. Donald J. Trump statement on preventing Muslim immigration. New York, New York, December 7, 2015. Donald J. Trump is calling for the total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what's going on. On March 4, 2017, Donald John Trump 
incited race baiting and racism, engendering racial antipathy, when he defamed, disrespected, and disparaged President Barack Obama by making the widely published statement, which has since been disclaimed, quote, terrible. Just found out that Obama had my wires tapped in Trump Tower just before the victory. Nothing found. This is McCarthyism, end of quote. On July 26, 2017, Donald John Trump incited bigotry, engendering LGBTQ enmity when he disparaged and disrespected transgender Americans by indicating that the cost of their medical care outweighs the sacrifice they're willing to make for our country. As he made the widely published statement, after consultation with my generals and military experts, please be advised that the United States government will not accept or allow transgender individuals to serve in any capacity in the U.S. military. Our military must be focused on decisive and overwhelming victory and cannot be burdened with the tremendous medical cost and disruption that transgender in the military would entail. In so doing, the aforementioned Donald John Trump, unmindful of the high duties of his high office and the dignity and proprieties thereof, and of the harmony and respect and courtesies which ought to exist and be maintained within American society, has undermined the integrity of his office, has brought disrepute on the presidency, has betrayed his trust as president to the manifest injury of the people of the United States of America, and as a result is unfit to be president. Therefore, Donald John Trump, by betraying his trust as president, warrants impeachment, trial, and removal from office, and disqualification to hold any office of honor, trust, or profit under the United States of America. Article 2, that Donald John Trump, President of the United States of America, unmindful of the high duties of his high office and the dignity and proprieties thereof, and of the harmony and courtesies which ought to exist and be maintained within American society, did betray his trust as president and bring, sh bring shame and dishonor to the office of the presidency by associating the majesty and dignity of the presidency with causes rooted in white supremacy, bigotry, racism, anti-Semitism, white nationalism, and neo-Nazism when he, to wit, on August 15, 2017, Donald John Trump made a widely published statement characterizing a group of anti-Semites, bigots, racists, and white nationalists, and Ku Klux Klansmen who rallied in Charlottesville, Virginia, as very fine people. Thereafter, on August 23, 2017, the United Nations Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination released a two-page decision in which it was stated that they were disturbed by the failure at the highest political level of the United States of America to unequivocally reject and condemn the racist, violent events and demonstrations led by the aforementioned groups, thereby potentially fueling the proliferation of racist discourse and incidents throughout the state party, and deeply concerned by the example of this failure could set for the rest of the world. On October 7, 2017, hate groups were again back in Charlottesville, Virginia, at the statue of Robert E. Lee, the Confederate general, chanting, you will not replace us. Since this event on October 7, 
The president has made many widely published statements about many things, including but not limited to the National Football League, but has not made one widely published statement condemning the hate groups for returning to the place where an innocent person lost her life at the hands of hate. In so doing, the aforementioned Donald John Trump, unmindful of the high duties of his high office and the integrity and proprieties thereof and of the harmony, respect, and courtesies which ought to exist and be maintained within American society has undermined the integrity of his office, has brought disrepute on the presidency, and has betrayed his trust as president to the manifest injury of the people of the United States of America and is unfit to be president. Therefore, Donald John Trump, by betraying his trust as president, warrants impeachment, trial, and removal from office and the disqualification to hold any office of honor, trust, or profit under the United States of America. Article 3, Donald John Trump, President of the United States of America, unmindful of his high duties of his high office and the dignities and proprieties thereof, and of the harmony and courtesies which ought to exist and be maintained in American society, did engage in perfidy by making the widely reported claim that three to five million people voted in illegally in the 2016 presidential election, and further expending tax dollars to establish a commission to investigate his claim, to wit, on November 27, 2016, Donald John Trump made the widely reported claim that in addition to winning the Electoral College in a landslide, I won the popular vote. If you deduct the millions of people who voted illegally. In Virginia, New Hampshire, and California. So why isn't the media reporting on this? Serious bias, big problem. On January 25th, 2017, Donald John Trump made the widely reported claim that I will be asking for a major investigation into voter fraud, including those registered to vote in two states and who are illegal. And on July 1st, 2017, Donald John Trump made the widely reported claim that numerous states were refusing to give information to the very distinguished voter fraud panel. What are they trying to hide? On June 28, 2017, according to highly reported news stories, the commission previously referenced by Donald John Trump requested detailed voter registration data from all 50 states, including names, addresses, and other sensitive data from every voter in the country. Several states refused to send the information, and some states have prevented, have been prevented by courts from turning over the information. In so doing, Donald, in so doing, the aforementioned Donald John Trump, unmindful of the high duties of his high office and the dignity and proprieties thereof, has undermined the integrity of his office and has brought disrepute on the presidency and has betrayed his trust as president to the manifest injury of the people of the United States of America and is unfit to be president. Therefore, Donald John Trump, by betraying his trust as president, warrants the impeachment, trial, and removal from office and disqualification to hold any office of honor, trust, or profit under the United States of America. Article 4. Donald John Trump, President of the United States of America, unmindful of the high duties of his high office and of the dignity and proprieties thereof, and of the harmony and courtesies which ought to exist and be maintained in American society, while aware of the widely reported history of unlawful abuses and brut brutality perpetrated by many, not all police officers, 
against innocent persons in the United States of America did betray his trust as president, bringing shame and dishonor to the office of the presidency by encouraging law enforcement officials to violate the constitutional rights of suspects in their custody and control. To wit, on July 28th, 2017, Donald John Trump, in a speech in front of the Suffolk Court County Police Department in Long Island, New York, stated that, and when you see these towns, and when you see thugs being thrown into the back of a paddy wagon, you just see them thrown in, rough. I said, please, don't be too nice. Like when you guys put somebody in the car and you just, and you're protecting their head. You know, the way you put their hand over, like don't hit their head and they've just killed somebody. Don't hit their head, I said. You can take the hand away, okay? This statement is injurious, not only to the rule of law, which presumes innocence until proven, until guilt is proven in a court of law, but also to the administration of justice, which requires the care, that care is given to persons held in the custody of law enforcement. Our nation is founded upon the social contract where the constitutional rights of the individual are not surrendered because of because he or she is accused of a crime. To speak to the contrary is a violation of the presidential oath of office which Donald, Don, Donald John Trump is bound. In so doing, the aforementioned Donald John Trump, unmindful of the high duties of his high office and the dignity and the proprieties thereof, and of his oath of office, quote, to faithfully execute the office of president of the United States of America and will to the best of my ability preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States has undermined the integrity of his office, has brought disrepute on the presidency, has betrayed his trust as president to the manifest injury of the people of the United States of America and is unfit to be president. Therefore, Donald John Trump, by betraying his trust as president, warrants impeachment, trial, and removal from office, and disqualification to hold any office of high honor, trust, or profit under the United States of America. I yield back. Okay. Under Rule 9, a resolution offered from the floor by a member other than the majority leader or the minority leader as a question of the privileges of the House has immediate precedence only at a time designated by the chair within two legislative days after the resolution is properly noticed. Pending that designation, the form of the resolution noticed by the gentleman from Texas will appear in the record at this point. The chair will not at this point determine whether the resolution constitutes a question of privilege. That determination will be made at the time designated for consideration of the resolution. 